How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm uh, down in Nashville for a couple of days of vacation and uh, yeah, just having a good time. So. Oh, I love Nashville. I can't wait to get back there. <laughs> Where are you located? Um, well, I'm in Boston, so oh, okay. Northeast. Cool. cool. Yeah, I live in Pennsylvania, so came down here for a few days. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah, well, I want to talk about all the good music that you've been releasing with AD 2020. I was listening to the album, and I have to say, I really love the feel-good, positive vibe of the album. Yeah, that was something that, you know, from the onset, it was it was part of the lyrics that we wrote, you know, it was just something we wanted to do. Um, the, um, the project, you know, and I've talked a lot, quite a bit about this, the project came about, you know, obviously during the pandemic. And um, Mark McNally, who's a, a singer, friend of mine, dear friend of mine for many years, uh, he and I have worked in some other projects together. And it was just the right time to, to do an original uh, music project with him. And um, I just started, you know, knocking on some doors of, of people that I knew to see if we could uh, get some assistance in putting it all together. And it just, yeah, it just really, you know, uh, came out really well, I think. You know, we're real, real pleased with the results. Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone who took part in the, the project, uh, they're all veteran musicians. So how was it kind of working with people who've been in the business just as long yeah. as you have? And <laughs> were you able so to, like bounce ideas off each other yeah no exactly i mean it was it was great i mean we um kind of started just like what you and i are doing we, we started with an initial zoom call and just kind of introduced everybody and everybody it, it's it would take a while for me to run through it all but there is sort of a loose thread that connects everybody everybody sort of worked you know seven degrees of separation type stuff but yeah everybody's was knew each other had worked with them you know somewhere along the lines so, um, but it was great. We, we just started, like I said, with a Zoom kickoff meeting call. And um, after that was in place, you know, um, we got down to work. Um, by the time everybody had come on board, so, you know, I can take you through the process a little bit if you want to hear that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we started um, initially with Mark, myself, uh, sending Dan Reed, our producer, um, lyrics. For, for songs that we had envisioned for this album. And um, Dan worked up demos, music demos of everything. And, you know, it was just every day, you know, we just check our email box and it was, you've got mail. And there was, you know, this amazing song. And and um, so it was really cool. You know, that was really cool. Part of the whole project It's kind of like Christmas every day for me. Um, and um, so by the time we got through the demos, you know, we, we had some rough demos and um, I knew Greg Smith. Um, I'd met him probably a, maybe a year prior and um, he was on my radar to bring into the project just because I love the energy that he brings to everything that he does. I mean, he's just a, you know, amazing guy, good friend. And um, just, he's a machine when it comes to work and work ethic and, and just, you know, great attitude and stuff. So I really wanted him on the project and, um, because I knew what I was up against. I knew it was going to be, you know, this is a big daunting task to pull this yeah. off. <laughs> and, you know, I just wanted the best people I could find. And, and then it was kind of like, after we, we had Greg uh, agreed to do the project, um, I had met Ron uh, Bumblefoot Fall um, through an event that Carl Palmer, uh, the drummer for Emerson Lake and Palmer, and uh, I'd met run through an event that Carl had did. And uh, so I reached out to him because the other thing was I was really listening to a lot of music that Ron had just released also. So, you know, and I was kind of like, I'd love to have him on the record if we could get him to play. So after a lot of phone calls and a lot of Zoom meetings and talking it out and, and uh, just getting to know one another, we spent a lot of hours, you know, just like you and I are doing. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, and, and, and we just spent a lot of time doing that sort of stuff. And um, then he agreed to do the album. And uh, so things were starting to move then. And, um, you know, it, it, we began tracking everything in September of last year. And, you know, I was the first to go in. I did my drum tracks early um, in the project. Mark came in soon after. He did a lot of his vocals to the original demos. And then we turned everything over to the individual musicians. So, um, 
they were everybody was busy everybody had different projects going on dan was in the middle of a film uh that he's doing that's going to be released next year um so yeah it was it was a lot to manage a lot of different schedules um but you know uh, the technology makes it all possible oh i know right <laughs> yeah, te yeah technology has really improved and it's crazy what you can do these days yeah it, and it was you know it was one of those things um you know, I, I knew from a standpoint of what everybody was sending. And then, so we had a really good uh, recording engineer um, who also helped us produce it to a degree. I mean, we, I give, da you know, Dan Reed produced the album. Without Dan Reed, this would not have happened. Um, and Bumblefoot, Bumblefoot also, you know, helped with quite a bit of it as well. And then um, Ron uh, De Silvestro uh, from RDS Media, um, he he was a recording engineer and a mix engineer on the album, and he's also the producer. So, you know, we had a lot of people, a lot of guidance, and and um, you know that was good. Um, also, there was just a lot of pieces because I would hear you know tracks coming in from everybody, and pretty much as soon as I got them, I loaded them up into Pro Tools to listen to what they sent. And you know, for guitar, for instance, you know, Bumblefoot might have sent me eight tracks full of guitar stuff and you know there's something going on on each of those tracks that you you know have to be aware of and make sure that they're in there same thing with keyboards there were a lot of keyboard tracks that came in uh dan played some keyboards uh derek sharinian uh also um from uh, dream theater and sons of apollo he he guests on it as well so there were just all these pieces um that you know I wanted to have on the album and I wanted to make sure that they didn't get buried and I wanted to make sure that they didn't get forgotten or overlooked or anything like that. So that was a, you know, that was a, a daunting task too, to kind of just make sure that as we were moving through things, you know, nothing was left behind. All right. And I have to say the first single Ricochet, um, I heard the song before seeing the video and when I was listening to it, I had a, western imagery in my mind so when i saw okay. the video i'm like wow <laughs> this, the video really <laughs> yeah, it, fits what i pictured <laughs> yeah it, it's um that was one of the first songs uh that was probably the first song we worked on as uh, for this album and um it was a song that mark had written um and had actually gone through some demoing with another project and, and it didn't work the way he wanted it to so he brought it back to us Dan worked his magic on it and totally changed the song. And so that's what I was aware of from day one going forward. And it was just really cool. I mean, there's little bits of pieces of electronica that's in it in the beginning. There's little, little things going on there. But I agree. I mean, when I was laying my drum tracks and writing the drum parts, um, I, had, I had this kind of Tom Petty-ish sort of... Um, western southwestern tumbleweed type of a thing yeah. going through my mind you know and and some of the stuff that i did drum wise kind of uh speaks of that um you know and and uh so that was always on my mind and and we got to the point where we were ready to start putting videos together for some of this stuff and um we kind of had you know um kind of had that imagery in mind and I sent it out to a group of people initially and it came back to me with this kind of strange country west country western sort of video and it just didn't fit it was not what we were looking for so I sent it to I called Mark actually at that point I said Mark you know am I on base with this is this you know what you had in mind and and so we talked about the lyrics and he said well it's kind of you know you meet a person and you uh, interact with that person in some way they affect you either positively negatively or whatever and you're constantly bouncing and ricocheting off of these people and so after that point it kind of took on another you know meaning for me about what the song was really about um, but we were already committed to the video at that point and so we kind of went with that path of uh, southwestern you know that sort of feel but what did you think of the video did you did you care for it or no, I really liked it. It actually kind of um, reminded me a little bit about a game, like a recent video game. I think it's called Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay. Yeah, All it right. kind of gave me that vibe, which was I'll pretty cool. 
That's cool. I'll have to, I'll have to look for that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's um, one of the things I would have loved to have been able to, to get on a plane with, you know, at least with Mark or maybe a couple of the other guys if possible and go out to like Arizona and, and actually shoot some footage out there. And we just couldn't do it. It was locked down. It was, you know, it was just all that kind of stuff that was going on. So, yeah, it was, uh, we were handicapped to a degree, you know, and, um, but I think all the, all the videos we, we released for this project, you know, worked out really well. Absolutely. I have to ask, um, the song Hard Drive, it has a very cool groove and melody to it. Uh, is there something you can tell me about this song that sure. kind of stands sure. out to you? Yeah. Um, so this one was written differently. This was one that Dan came back to us initially with a groove. We were probably um, two thirds of the way in and we were kind of thinking about wrapping up in terms of songwriting because Dan was, his schedule was starting to change with the film. So Dan brought us some music initially and um, we were kind of, you know, at a point we, we had Ricochet, we had Finding My Faith, we had Undivided already in the can, and we had um, a ballad. We, we decided we wanted to do a ballad. So after those pieces were there, um, it was like, okay, what's next? And um, we were just living technology, you know, and I was in my life. I, my background is technology, and there was just so much of it at that point in time. So we kind of went in two different paths. Mark and Dan were kind of working on hard drive together. And there was another song, Digital Overload, that was coming out at about the same time, too, that was written differently. So, yeah, Hard Drive was, was uh, music came pretty much from Dan. And Mark um, wrote all the lyrics for, for Hard Drive. Um, and there was about three different revisions of that. There was a couple different themes we went through um, before finally settling on, on where we settled. Um, I really like the track. Um, it, it was fun. Um, there were some obvious things that I thought of when we were um, starting to lay the drum tracks and stuff. Um, when I go in to do my parts, I have to think of everyone else. And I have to think of, you know, leave space for them to play, leave space for them to add things and, and stuff like that. But on this track, I thought, OK, I did that on all on everything else. This one, I want to put some fills and things like that in. So we worked out a little breakdown in the midsection where Bumblefoot and I play together. There's some drum fills that interact with the guitar and, and that kind of stuff. And I just think it fits really cool. Um, also Derek Sherinian's um, keyboards on that um, just kind of took it to another, you know, another level, another direction. But yeah, Hard Drive is one of my favorite tracks on the album as well. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a standout one. And then of course I have to ask you about the cover of um, Why Can't We Be Friends. So I have to say, it's a really fun song. You can't help but sing along to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. it's, I, I think the whole album's kind of that way in a sense it, for me. That's true. It's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, a, um, it's a great cruising album. And that's what I tell people, you know, if you throw it in your car, uh, however you do it, if you stream it, you have a physical CD, whatever, throw it in your car and go for a half hour ride and give it a listen. And it's just kind of, it's like a really good cruising record. Um, but yeah, why can't we be friends? <clears throat> um, it was it was one of those songs that was discussed really early in the project. Like I don't think we've we might have started working on maybe Ricochet, maybe, but it was early in the process. And I mean, I remember um, pitching it to Dan, and we you know pivoted right off of that right away to get into writing you know uh, original stuff. Uh, but I remember during one of the conversations with Bumblefoot early on, I pitched him the idea. I said, you know, well, yeah, we're going to do this record and then we're going to do, you know, this cover of, I'm thinking, why can't we be friends? And we're gonna, and what we wanted to do, I wanted to do a video. I wanted to get people to send us footage of them singing along. And that was one of my original ideas. It was, it was proving to be a little daunting to try and pull all that off. But um, I remember in one of the initial conversations with Ron, you know, and he, he would, Every time we would talk, he always had his guitar handy. He'd have an acoustic. So in one of the original conversations, you know, he busted out into the song right away and started singing it. And I think he was into it. I think he was, I think it was one of the songs that pulled him into the project. I think he wanted to really do it, you know. And um, we just had a great time with it. I mean, it was fun. Um, Dan, again, I got to tip my hat to Dan. And, and um, he was like, let's do it as a party, you know, party vibe type of song. And um, 
that's where we went with everything. Um, Melvin Brannon um, from Dan Reed Network, uh, dear friend, I've known him for you know a long, long time. Um, I asked him, I said, all right, I got something for you. We're gonna do why can't we be friends? And I want you to put upright bass in it somehow because we already had Greg playing electric bass on it. And uh, you know, I don't play electric or upright bass or bass at, at all, but um, Melvin came back to me, he said, I got an idea. He said, we're going to put the bass in, like you suggested. He said, I'm going to bow it. And so if you listen carefully, you hear him playing every note, the, the bows in there, along with the, the incredible bass that uh, Greg layered. And um, Melvin was also really instrumental, I would say, in uh, helping us lift that track a bit. There were some things, uh, some vocal things that, that came along on that track that, you know, were his suggestions. So, yeah, it was just a really, really cool team, uh, team effort. Um, we all decided to take a, a crack at doing lead vocals on it too, and um, uh, that, that was fun. <laughs> um, during uh, during the lockdown, uh, just going into it, I was incredibly busy with work, and um, I had developed a hernia, and so I planned on getting this thing operated on in like March of 2020. Well, that was all put off too. So, you know, here I am doing drum tracks and trying to sing with you know this hernia. Oh, but I got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I that sounds painful. It all. It, it, yeah, it was, and it was limiting a little bit, you know. But we had a, we had a great team who uh, coached me through my parts and stuff, and um, we got to um, shoot some of the footage down in uh, Forge uh, Studios where we did the drum tracking and the uh, vocal tracking, and then the rest of it was done uh, in our home uh, studios. But yeah, it's a it's a fun song actually. Uh, some of the people from War, from the original band, from their camp, have, have reached out to us and said, "Great cover, you know, and that sort of thing." So it's doing well on YouTube at this point. Yeah, I was really going to cool. ask if they reached out. That's that's cool that they, they did. did. Yeah, it, it's really cool. I mean, um, so you know, great band, great song, uh, great topic when they wrote it, and it still fits today. You know, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say the message is still relevant today. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, um, I, I love asking people, what was the first uh, rock concert you ever went to as a fan? As a is fan, okay. Yeah, um, so my first concert was The Police. Oh, wow, nice. The With Police, that Sting, yeah. right? With Sting, yes. Um, so... 1981, I guess. It was probably 1981. Um, and the band, the female band, the first one of the first female bands, the Go Go's, opened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I remember that, was, them. <laughs> that, was, that was my first concert. So, um, yeah, it, it was a thing. I grew up in a small town in uh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, back then, I mean, just getting around and getting to places, get, going 50 miles away to go to see a concert. That was like going to the edge of the earth, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> and you just didn't do it, you know. And um, so, yeah, so I, I was probably, you know, uh, 15, 16 years old, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, the police, great show. I can still picture it to this day. Um, you know, it was at the old Spectrum in Philadelphia, which they've since... Uh, imploded and built some new buildings down there <laughs> oh yeah that must have been a fun show yeah i wish i had a time capsule so i could see all these amazing classic rock bands in their heyday because i yeah fortunately missed well, that era <laughs> philadelphia was cool because they also had um you know big stadiums like a lot of cities do they would do these big summer jam concerts with you know they bring in I don't know, maybe eight bands on the same bill for the same ticket price. And so you could yeah. see, you know, you could see Foreigner and Loverboy, The Kinks, Joan Jett. Um, uh, I'm probably missing stuff with somebody else. Maybe Journey might have been on that same bill, you know. <laughs> it's like a whole day of just amazing, amazing shows. So. Yeah, that's what yeah. someone else was telling me about. I'm like, I wish... They could still do yeah, that. Yeah, you can go online <laughs> if you go go to uh, YouTube. I think you can look up the, the JFK Jam uh, festivals in Philadelphia. They were they were really cool back in the day. I went to quite a few of those. I saw the police uh, um, at one of those as well. With um, I'm trying to think, it was either Madness or the Specials. Uh, again, I think Joan Jett was also on that bill. REM, I think on oh, their yeah. very REM on their very first tour. Uh, 
So yeah, wow. Well, Wow, a lot of big names. Yeah, and then again, it was all for like one ticket price. You know, you couldn't beat it. Uh, fun times. That's amazing. Well, yeah, like now today, just to see one band, it's like five hundred dollars for front row seats. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, and um, you know, these were all out, outdoor events, so it was all general admission. So get there as early as possible, and you know, pack your way in. It'd be in the summertime, and It'd be 103 degrees and people would be passing out and they'd be spraying the crowd down with water trying to keep people <laughs> from passing out and whatever. But yeah, you got to see a lot of a lot of great music, you know. Uh, sounds like a good time. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was. Well, it's great that live music is finally making a return. It is. Slowly um, but surely. You know, I know yeah, it some is. shows I was are to go still to a being show canceled. Next... What's that? I know uh, some shows have been canceled again, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's um I had a I had a concert scheduled for uh, the 1st of September and I have another one scheduled for the 8th of September. Uh, so the one on the 1st was canceled just because of the delta spiking. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one I haven't heard uh, if that's going to going to happen. Um, the first concert in September was rescheduled now for January 1st. So so New Year's Day, I'll be going to New York. <laughs> I wasn't oh, wow. To, I wasn't <laughs> it's going to be a lot of people that. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll uh, be doing that. But, yeah, it's, it is, it's very cool to see uh, things starting to open up again. Um, just, um, yeah, I feel for, you know, I feel for everybody. I mean, this is just a really tough time, and I think everybody's just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, no matter where you go, no matter, you know, every city seems to be handling things a little bit differently. Um, as we speak, I'm down in Nashville, and um, – you know, just kind of watching how things are, are done down here. It's a little different. Um, you know, we're still seeing um, a lot of masking. Um, again, coming back, you know, because of the Delta variants and stuff. Other areas, um, you know, where I live, um, it's loosened up quite a bit. Um, whether that'll, you know, continue or not, I don't know. But I'll have to wait and see. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, we're... Um, you know, and on that note, I mean, as far as live playing, people ask us, you know, are you guys going to get together and do live shows? Um, kind of what I've told people in the past, I kind of make a joke about it, is that we're the non-traveling Wilburys, um, <laughs> to reference Tom Petty and, and George Harrison, all those guys. Um, yeah, I don't know that that'll happen. I mean, we're all good friends and, and that sort of stuff, and I think that there's always a possibility that we could perhaps uh, guest uh, with each other at some point. That may happen. Um, you know, we're looking to do that. I know Mark and I work together in a couple of different projects, and we're kind of on a hiatus with that stuff right now, just until uh, we finish this promotional cycle of the album. And once we get that done, um, and the album continues to take and grow legs, um, then we can back off a little bit, and we'll start to look at you know 2022 and playing some shows again. Oh yeah, right that'd be now, great. Right now, we're just in promo mode. <laughs> right. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I also wanted to ask you, um, are there any newer bands um, out there right now that you're kind of digging? Yeah. Um, so, her, I'm a big fan of, I'm a oh, big yeah. fan of her. Um, I think she's great. I think she's a great artist, um, phenomenal player. Um, so that's that's one. Um, there's, um, you know, she's no she's no longer new, but I mean, Lady Gaga, for instance, again another you know force. I mean, she's just an amazing performer. I mean, amazing artist. Uh, fan of her music. Um, it's it's funny. For the past year, I haven't listened to anything other than this album. And yeah. I did that deliberately. I did it deliberately because I didn't want to draw um, too many other influences. You know, I wanted this thing to really uh, have its own sound and, and that sort of thing. And I think it does. So so deliberately, I, I didn't listen to anything. I, I, um, I'm really into vinyl. And so I've been collecting over the past year, like a stack of vinyl. All these different collections that were released this past year. And I mean... They're on my list now. I got to start to listen to them at some point, and I have weeks and weeks worth of music to listen. Yeah, to. Yeah, vinyl is coming back. 
It is. It is. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to do a, we're going to do a release of the album on vinyl. Um, it's actually in production right now. Uh, probably by year end, it'll be ready. Um, we started this. We started this process of recording everything last September, and at that point in time, we were looking at like maybe seven weeks from the time we placed the order till we were to receive the vinyl. Now it's anywhere from 26 weeks to 52 weeks because of the demand. So yeah, that's our like backlog. Yeah, our order's in. Um, it's been in for a couple of months, and um, we're moving through that process. I'm telling everybody, I think we'll have it by year end. You know, that's where we're at. So it'll be cool because we did a really, uh, I think we did a really good job on um, the packaging for the album as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a copy here to show you today, um, but we, um, it's just a really cool product. It, it was a really cool package um, in terms of, uh, it gives you a lot to look at and, and a lot of things just to kind of check out. So if you have the physical CD or one of the downloads from our website, there's also artwork that goes along with that. And um, there's a 12 page booklet that, that we came up with and it's got, you know, just artwork and it kind of looks like a diary as you're going through it in the yeah, title of the That's album. Awesome. Book. And you're, you know, you kind of scroll through it page by page and there's handwritten notes and things in the, you know, in the, down in the bottom in the margins that, that are written. And it kind of looks kind of looks like the notes of, you know, somebody who was experiencing the lockdown and what was going through their minds. So it's pretty cool. So I think once, um, you know, I've seen it already on CD and, you know, obviously CDs are small. Uh, I think it's going to be really cool when it's blown up to 12 inch vinyl size and you get a full size booklet and all that kind of stuff. So oh, I'm anxious. Really to, cool. Just to see it. Yeah, I think the album is going to sound good on vinyl, too. Uh, yeah, I think so, too. Um, we mixed it at, uh, Ron, like I said, Ron uh, D. Silvestro of RDS Media uh, was the mix engineer on it. And um, he, you know, did a fantastic job. I One of the things I like about it is that, you know, you, if you listen to it a, a couple times, you're going to hear new things every time you listen to the record. And just, but everything's there and you can hear everything. Um, I think it's a modern sounding record uh, with some vintage throwback um, in there as well. Um, but the drums, for instance, you know, we told them we wanted a modern sounding drum uh, sound for the record. And uh, I think we achieved that. Um, but yeah, as far as vinyl goes, um, we, after everything was mixed, we sent all the tracks to Abbey Road. And um, they just did a fantastic job. I mean, obviously, it's Abbey Road, one of the you know, world uh, leaders in mastering. Um, we sent them the tracks. They sent us another pass through, and we had increased the bass a little bit on the, the final master. But, um, yeah, as far as vinyl goes, it, it's an interesting thing because I've never done it before. And so I had to learn a little bit about, okay, wh what's different between mastering for a CD and mastering for vinyl? And, one of the things that they're concerned about with um, vinyl is how much bass is on the record, <clears throat> on the tracks, because a lot of bass can make the needle jump. Hmm. And so the guys that are actually doing the mastering to the actual vinyl and the cutting and all that kind of stuff, they're aware of that. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they're trained engineers to deal with that kind of stuff. But, you know, there's a, the bass on the album is really good. And I think it's just going to sound fantastic on vinyl. I'm really, really looking forward to it. That's great. Yeah. I have a record player, so I'll definitely have to scoop oh, one we'll, up when, uh, when they are released. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely make sure we get one too. Just stay in touch with, uh, with our PR girl. <laughs> Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> I call her a girl, but now. Yeah, just stay in touch with Shauna. Yeah, she's great. I love her. <laughs> oh, she is. Fantastic. Well, Todd, I really appreciate your time chatting with me. I, I love yeah. the album Lockdown Diaries. Uh, it's great uh, from start to finish. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it was great. Um, we're so glad you, you enjoy it. And uh, like I said, stay in touch. We'll definitely get a copy out to you. Great. Thank you so much. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Take care, Jen. All right.